That's a very good question, uh, considering the timing of it. So, uh, because we are actually in the middle of uh, the place where we change from the old uh, task world into the, the new world. And the, the old task relates to the deterrence uh, concept uh, that NATO had before uh, Russia invade Ukraine. And um, these tasks were related to uh, facilitate the reinforcements of NATO's high readiness forces to Lithuania through kind of this uh, tripwire and, and hope uh, deterrence. The new task which we are working on right now, and I can come back to that later, is uh, also with reinforcements uh, coming into uh, Lithuania and sustainment of these forces, but it is of course on a much higher scale than it was previously. So uh, there's a, a big difference here. Yeah, so there are different uh, NATO uh, uh, detachments or contingents uh, here in Lithuania. And if we take them one by one, we have the Baltic Air Policing in Xiaole, and they normally rotate. Uh, there are normally two teams, uh, one that has uh, the, the main uh, task and then one that supports them from another country. So uh, they are here for four months, so that's a four-month rotation. And then there's the Americans in Pabrada. Uh, they rotate normally every nine months uh, in, and then the uh, the German-led uh, EFP battle group in Rukla, they normally go uh, in uh, six-month rotations. Well, it's uh, a lot of speculation in that uh, question, I think. Um, I would say that w right now, uh, I think we are in a, in a war, we are in a hybrid war with Russia because uh, we are under attack daily in the, in the cyber world and also in the information world. And we see that even our critical infrastructure is being targeted. So, so we are in, uh, in fact in war with Russia already within the gray area. Um, so on, on the other hand, I would say if nations in NATO now really deliver what they promised to deliver, I don't think that we will see anything happen because I think the deterrence part or the deterrence value of what we are doing now uh, for sure will prevent Russia from doing anything here. I think uh, you're touching on a point here that's uh, very important and that's the uh, the air defense of, uh, of NATO and especially the frontline nations. Um, and um, right now, just to a few facts on this, uh, we already have the Baltic air policing uh, present here, as I mentioned before, and Lithuania has their own organic uh, air defense, actually different air defense systems, but there's also the talk about NATO's rotating air defense system into uh, Lithuania. So, so uh, I think we're talking about a lot of capabilities that can be used here. Um, but it's also about rules of engagement. Um, so you just don't shoot a missile down without uh, uh, any thoughts about this before the, beforehand. Um, and, and we should also consider that uh, if we do, it would be the, our missile would go into Ukrainian territory. So it needs to be arranged with Ukraine that it's okay we shoot uh, towards them. So I think a, a lot of coordination uh, needs to be done uh, before this uh, will happen. Uh, and then uh, I would not speculate further on it actually, but just say that uh, there might be a situation where we would go in and, uh, and shoot down something in, uh, that is in Ukraine uh, presenting a threat to, to us. But, um, but I don't think we are there yet. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure if it would be an escalation. It uh, might be within the self-defense and also in cooperation with Ukraine. Um, first of all, I don't think it actually has changed. Maybe it has just uh, 
reaffirmed itself even to just say yes we we will support yes we mean this what we're doing uh, but I think that the um, so as I mentioned before the the old concept of uh, only deterrence and tripwire so during the Madrid summit uh, in 22 after the second Russian invasion of Ukraine NATO threw away that old uh, concept and implemented uh, the new concept and after that concept was approved, then the, uh, uh, the regional plan was developed and the regional plan was uh, approved during the Vilnius summit. And these regional plan are operational level, very comprehensive and very detailed plans that uh, gives us a picture about how NATO will uh, conduct the fight on an operational level, meaning land, uh, air, navy, uh, cyber and space, so combining everything. Um, and then also applying the forces into these plans because the, the plans are nothing without the forces. So, so the plans need the forces and when they get the forces they are ready to be executed. And so I think actually this is the, the even this, is, this shows the uh, more firm commitment to support uh, uh, the Baltic states and actually the whole Eastern Front, uh, the, the new NATO plans. And uh, we're still working on them uh, uh, to a, a further detail level, further down the, the chain of command. Uh, and ideally, every soldier would know where his foxhole is or where he should fight from. But this is, uh, that will take some time uh, yet to, to reach that level. But, but this is the way we're going, so I'll say, the, um, the commitment has um, changed uh, not in policy, but in scope and size. I mean, we are stacking literally uh, NATO units on top of each other along, along the uh, eastern border of NATO right now, ready to defend uh, every inch of NATO territory. Well, I think this is... Um, um, a normal day procedure for our Baltic uh, air policing friends in uh, in Shaolay who is flying uh, uh, along the border to, to patrol and, and show presence at the border, uh, but also engaging uh, Russian flights when they uh, come too close or they uh, disobey uh, uh, international orders in how you behave uh, with the military flights. So uh, I think there's um, the way that we react on this and uh, the transparency we try to look into it because we have actually a pretty well picture, good picture about what's going on and what is uh, already in Kaliningrad and also in Belarus. And I think the Russians probably also have a, a good picture about uh, what's here. So, so this transparency where we can see what's happening, I hope that adds some um, certainty that nothing, uh, no mistake would happen here. Because I honestly, with all the, the, uh, the preparations that we are conducting and all the forces that nations are putting into it, uh, I don't think uh, Russia would have an opportunity to, to attack. Uh, so I think we are we're actually really good at matching this, but we are also, we're transparent and we still need to be it and, uh, and we need to see what Russia is doing because Russia cannot uh, build up without us seeing it. We saw that when uh, they had the, the, the enormous build up before the invasion in Ukraine. So it was clear to all of us to see the build up. So the physical thing, we could see that uh, very clearly. So we will also be able to see that uh, even more because now it's, it's close to, to our borders here. Uh, so um, I don't think we will be surprised. And um, I think the, the deterrence effect of having a German brigade permanently based here in Lithuania with their family presence. So this is to me the maximum uh, form of deterrence that NATO can show. We put another country's unit, big unit, uh, five, six thousand soldiers into another country. We provide the family around them. We deploy them for three years. Um, we integrate them into the country. So this is the maximum uh, deterrence that we can actually show uh, Russia that uh, we mean this. So, so I think this, this is uh, for me reassuring and uh, making sure that uh, nothing will happen.
I would not uh, judge on that. Uh, look, but looking at a map, of course, you, you see there's a difference. Uh, Lithuania has a longer border. Um, Estonian's border is characterized with the big lakes, uh, and they have the, the Narva area, and then they have a short area uh, south of, uh, of the lakes. Um, so um, in a way, it's more safe, you can say, because there's a clear river, and there's a shorter uh, border to defend. Uh, but of course, it's also closer to, uh, to uh, St. Petersburg. So, uh, so there's a, you can see it in different ways. But, um, so I'll not judge what's more uh, dangerous or, or whatever. I think we, uh, as a, from a military perspective, we, um, we look at risk like uh, we don't really like risk. We would like to be uh, very certain that we have so much, much forces that uh, no one would uh, dare to attack us. But, but whenever you have a conflict, uh, you have what you have when uh, a conflict starts. Um, so, but I'll go back to uh, what I mentioned before. I think what nations now is, has committed to uh, the amount of forces that are committed to these regional plans um, is very, very impressive. Um, so, so I think um, that will have a, hopefully an assurance effect on uh, the local population here, but at least um, also a deterrent effect on Russia that uh, don't, uh, don't come and mess here because, uh, I mean, the, it's it's overwhelming with what we can produce uh, to, to match that. Um, so I, I think, and looking around Europe now, I think uh, of different nations, I think actually nations are stepping up, um, not as fast as I would have liked to see. Uh, they should probably have done that uh, after the first Russian invasion in 2014. But then there was a, a political sense that uh, we might change the, uh, we might contain this and we might change the mind of, of uh, Russian leaders. But, um, but of course that came to a, a, a total stop uh, two years ago. So, so now finally nations has uh, um, realized that um, we cannot really trust uh, Russia on this and we need to, uh, we need to mobilize our countries uh, so that uh, we can uh, uh, defend again against a Russian invasion because that would be the best deterrence. We need to transfer our societies into a whole of defense society. Um, and I know it's, several nations have talked about this, that every citizen also needs to have some um, equipment so they can be capable of taking care of themselves for the first few days without electricity, for instance. And I think this is very relevant. The more indigestible we make our own countries, uh, the more we prepare the whole society for, for acting against a, a Russian invasion, the less the danger is that uh, it ever would happen. Well, I think it's um, I think it's just a logic uh, approach uh, because NATO, many NATO countries are already involved in this. As I understand it, it's a uh, it's the Ramstein Group, right? That uh, was initially uh, U.S. led. That is now uh, we talk about uh, NATO taking the uh, the chair of this, um, and uh, many NATO countries are already. Uh, bilaterally supporting Ukraine and I think it would be a good idea to have this group of uh, supportive uh, countries to work together uh, supporting Ukraine uh, in this. It makes sense in my head. Well, I would, um, I would be reluctant to comment directly on uh, the Italian uh, situation but, but to me, I think there are many European uh, countries and uh, I would say NATO countries that are not really prepared for this yet. But, uh, but I am sure that they will be prepared uh, to, if something should happen. Um, so if you have a structure that's not fully manned or maybe manned uh, 80%, um, I think you might be able to fill the rest 20% uh, if, if it's really needed. Um, and uh, if you don't, well, then you fight with what you have. 
uh, that's kind of uh, what the military have done every time it, they're getting surprised. So we fight with what we have and then make the best out of it. So I, I again, I really have comfort in that uh, European nations uh, are stepping up and uh, giving the necessary resources, allocating resources to defense uh, and also supporting the fight in Ukraine so, uh, so we can be sure that uh, Ukraine will win this fight.